The New York Mets. The New York Mets, what can we say about them? Well, first of all, they suck, okay? The Mets finished last year with 79 and 83 record. 18 games behind Philadelphia, okay? The New York Mets always have this going. They always do great in their contenders up to the All-Star game. When they get to the All-Star game, they can't do anything. They lose a lot. Like, seriously, that's just messed up. But the New York Mets next year, they're just going to... They're going to suck still. They did nothing, okay? They only got Chris Young. That's it, okay? They lost Pedro Feliciano, this, their key bullpen, the key got player in their bullpen. He appear, He always appears in at least 100 games on average every year with the Mets. Okay, well, the Mets... Let, um, all right. Well, the Mets... Oh, by the way, Pear Bear says the Mets suck. They suck. Okay, now for the pitching, they got R.A. Dickey. Now, Dickey is one of those guys that was a reliever. They got him from Minnesota and turned out to be an excellent starting pitcher. He's the guy that throws the 67 mile an hour knuckleball. He went 11 and 9 last year with a 2.84 ERA. Okay, that's good. He has over 100 strikeouts. But the key is, only two people hit home runs against him last year. He went just about the whole season before actually giving up a home run. Okay, that, now that, that's good. Okay, if you can go just about the whole season without giving up any home runs at all, that's fantastic. But, okay, they also got Dylan G. Dylan G is the rookie that they called up last year. He went 2-2 two and two with a 2.18 ERA. In 33 innings. What do I think of that? Not Steven Strasburg material, but he's definitely close to it. It's a good. It was a good idea to bring him up. He's definitely going to be a key asset next next year in the 2011 season. They got John Neese, who went nine and ten with a 4.20 ERA. John Neese. He was so good before the All Star break. Okay. Then after that, he just sucked. He had like a 3.0 ERA up to the All-Star break, but then he went up to 4.2, okay? That's a big leap. Seems like a lot of people either got hot after the All-Star break or sucked after the All-Star break. Nice is one of those guys that sucked after the All-Star break. They got Mike Pelfrey. Pelfrey went 15-9 and with a 3.66 ERA. He, he locked in over 200 innings, 204 innings. Now, John, now, um, Mike Pelfrey, he's the kind of guy that, that, like I said before, he sucked after the All-Star break. He had a 2.9 ERA up to the All-Star break, but then he just started getting cold. But, not, but still though, okay, he has a pretty, de he has pretty decent numbers for being a Met, that is, with a 3.66 ERA. Jo John Pelfrey is definitely one of those guys that, could eat, can eat up innings, and you can look at to go for another 15 wins next year, at least. Probably 16 wins, 17. Definitely not 20. This is the Mets we're talking about, okay? They can't, they cannot come through in a clutch for life, okay? They suck with the clutch. Then they got Johan Santana. Santana went 11 and 9 to the 2.98 ERA. He had 199 innings, one short of 200. But the thing is, with um, with uh, Johan Santana, he's injured. Okay, he's not gonna be coming back until at least June. Okay, medics still don't know if he's coming back at all this year, if not by the end of the season. Okay, this is their ace. Okay, Johan Santana, a 2.98 ERA. He has a lifetime 3.3 ERA, 3. I mean 3.13 ERA. Or 3.12 ERA, okay? That is key. He's the key pitcher. He's the ace of the staff. You lose the ace, you lose the game just about, okay? Or you guarantee to lose at least 20 games just because he's there. Because he's not there. They also got um, Chris Young. Last year he went 2-0 to .90 ERA. 
but he got injured, only 20 innings pitched. But the year before that, in 09, he went 4 and 6 with a 5.21 ERA. Excuse me. Again, he got injured in 09. So he only went 76 innings. With that being said, they got Chris Young, who they think will be the biggest asset, okay? This guy is injury prone, okay? Seriously. Next year, look at him to barely break 10 wins, okay? And at least a 4.5 ERA for him, okay? All this, all this hype about how he, how good he is, and all that crap. Don't buy it, okay? He sucks, okay? When he's healthy, he's good, but when is he healthy, okay? Only time he was healthy was in like 07 or 08, okay? Like, no, like 07 actually, 07 or 06. 08 he got injured too. So yeah, three straight consecutive years of Chris y Young being injured and paying him good money to come to New York Mets. I know the Mets have a good amount of money, but they do not know how to buy players, okay? They cannot use their money wisely, okay? They got Josh Toll who, for catcher, who had three home runs, 17 RBIs, and a 277 batting average, a 357 on base percentage. He was just one of those guys, a backup catcher, but since they got rid of Rod Barajas, he, they, the Mets used Toll, so it's probably going to be good. He's going to be a good catcher. They got Ike Davis, rookie year last year, 19 homers, 71 RBIs, okay? He only had a 264 bat batting average, but he had a 351 on base percentage. That's 90 plus extra points for being on base. With that being said, Ike Davis next year, since the last year was his first year, he can look down to improve. So I say give him 23 home runs next year. Maybe get to the 80 RBI mark, I don't know, okay? But he's definitely going to get at least 22 home runs next year. His average might stay the same, but still, though, he's a very good defensive first baseman. Maybe gold glove caliber. Last year, he had some amazing plays and dives for first base. They got Luis Castillo. He had a 235 batting average in 86 games. He had 17 RBIs and... Zero home runs. Zero. Okay. Zero. Um, Luis Castillo had a 337 OBP. That's great. That's a hundred and two high percentage of being on base. But the fact that 335 on base percentage isn't really that good. That sucks. But it's good that he's a hundred points higher. Now get the average up 50 more points, and then get the on base percentage higher. Then I'll get the on base percentage from three from 337 to like, I don't know, 387. He only played in 86 games. He's a he's an okay defensive second baseman. Okay speed, okay contact. He's not really an all star, but he's just a second baseman. They got David Wright, 29 home runs, 103 RBIs, 283 batting average, and a 354 on base percentage. That is great, okay, considering how he did the past year power wise. In 09, he had 10 home runs, 72 RBIs, but a 307 batting average and a 390 on base percentage. Okay, that is great. If you can have stuff like that, if you can have the thing that happened with him was that he desperately dropped in power in 09, but he increased in average and on base percentage. Now, if he can keep his average and OBP as he did in 09, uh. He but keep the power as he did in last year in the two in the 2010 season, then that'll be a key All Star player right there. Guarantee you an All Star player right there. They got Jose Reyes who had 11 home runs and 54 RBIs. He had a 282 batting average and a 321 on base percentage. Reyes is one of those guys that he's super fast. Okay, but his average is okay, I guess. A 290 career hitter, so he's only eight points down. Excuse me, 11 home runs. That's pretty good for a guy like him. But and 54 RBIs is good. But he's injured. He gets injured a lot. Okay, it's always a question with him. When is he gonna be back? Is he gonna be back? When's he, when's the next day he's gonna get injured? And that's why Mets fans always worry worry whenever he makes a diving catch because they always fear 
he's gonna hurt himself and whenever he steals the base they're gonna be like oh my goodness he's gonna hurt himself cause he sucks okay he, he's injury prone they got Jason Bay six homers 47 RBIs last year 259 batting average and a in 95 games for the New York Mets. Right. Next year, oh, by the way, Jason Bay got injured. That's why he only played 95 games. He got injured at Dodger Stadium when he caught a fly ball but ran right into the fence. The fence actually, the fence actually opened and it was locked, so that was a pretty hard hit. He had a concussion. Bay next year, look at him to deeply improve next year, okay? Greatly improve. He's going to get 25 home runs next year, 27 home runs next year, have 80 RBIs, have a 280 batting average, and play the whole season, or 140 games at least. They got Scott Haston this offseason, 10 home runs, 36 RBIs, and 299 at-bats. With that being said, next year if he plays full-time, look at him going to hit 20 home runs. With with like 60, 70 RBIs. He had a 210 batting average. Next year, look at that to greatly improve to a 240. <laughs> greatly improve. But you know what I mean. It's good for him. 210 to 240, that's pretty good. 30 points. Um, they got Angel Pagan, who had 11 home runs and 69 RBIs. But the thing is, he had a 290 batting average. That's great, okay? His power isn't really up there. He's decent with power, but. The average, 290, that's great, okay? But what sucks is this guy, Carlos Beltran, okay? Beltran had 7 home runs, 27 RBIs, 255 batting average, and 64 games. Okay, Beltran is a cancer, okay? The Mets had a shot before Beltran came back from the DL. He should have stayed on the DL, or the Mets should have traded him this offseason, or just traded him when he got back. Okay, sure the Mets think, oh my goodness, he's great because of his past, but he's he sucks. He's a cancer. Okay. Oh, and also the Mets, might I say, the Mets only last year they just about the, since they fired their GM and their manager. That's great because their old manager was just for Hispanics and Mexicans. I don't want to sound racist, but this man, this GM was prejudiced. Okay. All he cared about was Hispanics and Mexicans, okay? Like, how they wanted them, and that's it. They got David Wright. He, David Wright doesn't even deserve to be on that team. He's definitely much better than that. Next year, look at the mess. They suck even more. Going from 79 and 83 to 69 and 93. Because that's what they're heading for right now, okay? That's my take on the New York Mets. It's all true. And their GM, thank God they're gone because that means we can actually get some decent players. Okay, not just Spacks and Mexicans. We can get some decent other players. I don't want to sound racist, but like decent white and black players. I don't want to sound racist or anything, but I'm just saying, okay? Because that's how the GM is, the new GM. They don't, he doesn't care about color. The old GM just cares about Spacks, uh, Spanish and Mexicans. Hispanics, okay? Thank you.